All right, congratulations, you've done it. This is the seventh day of the seven day challenge. And really, what we're going to be doing is taking a look at the last seven days, where you started, where you came from. Okay, so our, you know, the, you've been journaling hopefully for the last six days. You've seen some results from not having carbs, not having rest, or having rest, uh, you know, getting rid of white food, getting rid of gluten, getting rid of starches. Uh, you understand the difference between being acidic and being alkaline. Those are really, really important. And one of the things that we haven't talked a little bit about, although we've sort of skirted around it, is what's called metabolic typing, which means that if your ancestors came from uh, the tropics and ate, you know, bananas and coconuts and stuff, you know, whenever they picked off the, the tree, uh, your the way you react to food is different than if, say, you were uh, coming from a, a northern climate where you had to store food in order to get through the winters because all this white stuff was around. Uh, so these were called we call these metabolic typing, uh, metabolic types, and it's it can get a little bit involved. But this is why you could have a banana and be alkaline, and somebody else could have a banana and be acidic. So you eat a banana, you're like, ah, oh, everything is fine, cool dude. And the other person, which could be your partner in life, could be a coworker in life, eats a banana and they're like totally road rage, right? And this is the other reason why someone can have go on like the South Beach diet and someone can go on the Atkins diet or some other diet or a coconut diet and there will be people that, you know, 10,000 people go on this diet and somebody dies. They were on the wrong diet. It was not the diet for them, or they, or they got no, uh, they didn't lose any weight. Or somebody else goes on a diet and it just melts off. So they're absolutely convinced. They're all you got to do is eat a banana, four bananas a day, have a glass of coconut water, and you're gonna just drop weight like crazy. You don't even have to change anything else. Just add that in the morning, and then you do it, and you put on 10 pounds. Like what's up with that? Metabolic typing. We are, we have these general things that are similar and we have these general things that are dissimilar and when we take something that works for us and we we say this works for the whole civil you know all of the people on the planet it doesn't and then we those people don't understand why you can be so happy about something and they're miserable because of the same thing now you're getting a bit of an understanding of that and we're going to get into that in a little bit more depth because we're actually going to start using some of that terminology to to start sharing that with you because it's really important and it becomes a challenge because what happens if you're a certain metabolic type and your partner that you're living with is another certain metabolic type and they're the opposites so in other words what you're eating that makes you really feel happy and and good and strong makes them feel like miserable and mad road rage puts on weight all those other things I mean, and that's something nobody ever talks about and it's really really important so Martin, let's get into some of this stuff. We're going to take a look at where we've come from in the last seven days and kind of where we're going to be going in the next rest of our lives, right? Indeed. So what you've really gone through is what you would find in either the book written by Dr. William Walcott about metabolic typing, or you would also be able to get some of it in the free test that Dr. Mercola has on Mercola.com. He calls it metabolic typing. And it's the the entry level, just the cursory top level. They call it the basic or entry level. <clears throat> What's available to you through Life Enthusiast is the advanced metabolic typing test. I'm one of the CMTAs that's certified metabolic typing advisors. I've taken the education and I'm a certified, authorized, practice it as a health coach, and that's individualized. So if you do decide to purchase the access to the actual advanced level metabolic typing test, you'll find it on Life Enthusiast. You can do it there, and then you'll get individualized care. You get your own what to eat, what ratios, which foods. It's the A list, the green foods. Those are the ones that are good for you. The black list, which is the occasional use and the red list, the, well, not so good for you. Try and not eat that. And we'll also be able to work out the specific ratios between starches, 
fats, and proteins. And it's all over. You will hear it's got mentioned different diets. You hear the 80, 10, 10, or the 30, 30, 40. Which one is the 40? Um, and other blends. And if you really look at it, it's the full spectrum from the tropicals who lived uh, in warm climates with access to a lot of starches. If you lived, lived in North Africa, you would be eating lots of dates, figs, pomegranates, and uh, camel milk, all sugars, all starchy things. On the other hand, if you were somewhere in, I don't know, north of 60, it's a really cold climate, Norway, Sweden, North England, uh, that's probably Scotland, really. Um, you would be living on proteins. Like six months out of the year, there was nothing fresh to be had. So stored sauerkraut, maybe, and uh, some grains, some gruel, and an animal food. That's, that's what it was. And what happens is this. When a child is born in the uh, family that lives in that particular climate, it is feeding or eating the food that's available in that resource. Up until 500 years ago, we didn't travel much. We, we were stuck in that geographic area. So give it two or three winters of food like that, and you're either weak and uh, sickly and probably get probably don't make it. I mean, typically a, a woman would have 12 children and only four or five of them grew up into adulthood. It was very common for children to not survive infancy or adolescence. And else you're thriving. And if you're thriving, then of course you're strong enough. You make the reproductive age. So within three or four generations, it's all sorted out. If you're living with the Eskimos and the winter is uh, seal meat, whale blubber, and uh, cold cuts, and by that I mean cold cuts, um, if you're supposed to be eating bananas and, and turnips, you're not going to make it. So this is what happens. When we, the white man, arrived in North America, with the Plains Indians who followed the buffalo, they were used to a lot of red meat and berries. And then we showed up with starchy foods and even alcohol. It just totally blows up their metabolic adaptations. Doesn't work. That's why you see such high levels of diabetes in certain specific ethnic groups, because they're eating the wrong food. Anyway, so you have the resource available. So if you are um, alkalized by fats, you're an oxidizer. If you are alkalized by starches, you're autonom autonomic. There are different dominances how your body generates energy. Not that it matters. You know, that's just a label. But what is important to know is that your genetics predict what is required for you and it's your great-great-grandmothers and great-great-grandfathers, and they're at... Okay, so Martin, this process that we've gone through for the last seven days is to give us an idea of what uh, type of me metabolic type that we are, because you, I, I'm really getting the impression that a big part of the reason that we're unhealthy, that we've got fibromyalgia, is because we're not eating for our right type. Yes, fibromyalgia in general or chronic inflammatory diseases and there are many whether it's the migraine syndrome or the back pain or the multiple sclerosis or the Hashimoto's or the Sjogren's or the I could go on for 10 minutes of different diagnoses each one of them describing a specific breakdown of the body but they all are chronic inflammatory diseases that are caused by the mismatch of what your physiology requires and what it's getting. And food is a big part of it. The other inputs, and we mentioned them elsewhere, are the level of toxicity that you're carrying, which should be reduced, and the missing nutrients, which need to be brought in, and the wrong nutrients that need to be removed from the picture, and 
the circulation, we talk about stagnation, we are too sedentary and we need to make sure that you do move enough. And lastly, we talk, call it distortion. We haven't mentioned it here and this program is just not deep enough to deal with it, but there will be additional support. Uh, Scott, what do you think uh, about ad additional programs that we can offer or at least direct people to as far as dealing with the vibrational side of things? Well, one of the things that we've done is we've put together a course on uh, the four horsemen of disease, and which, co which covers what we were just talking about in terms of vibration and dis distortion and um, toxicity and, toxicity so on, and yeah. malnutrition and and everything else and we get into that in a little bit more depth so what we'll do is we'll make sure we have a link and and a discount for everyone that's gone through the seven day challenge so that you can access that and get into it in a little more depth uh, but we're you know what you've done right now is you've taken the last seven days and you've taken huge strides in being aware of where you are in terms of your metabolic type like you know what types of foods you need to eat if you want to be alert and awake and you know what ones you need to take if you want to be like a little bit more mellow and everything else and hopefully you're seeing um, as you and also becoming sensitive to things like I want to have a good night's sleep and I get acidic because I really like to have a banana and a banana makes me acidic I should not have a banana you know 10 minutes before I want to go to bed because I'll be awake and that actually or is something that I deal with right because um, I tend to be a night owl and I've noticed as I've gone through this process with Martin that hey you know a bowl of cereal makes me acidic which makes me alert and I have it at nine o'clock at night and I can't get to sleep till two in the morning because I'm now acidic and my body needs to get back to being a little more alkaline so I can have something different and I'll sleep like a baby and I'll get to bed a lot earlier so you're gonna be seeing these sort of things as well you need to get a good good rest you need to get a good night's sleep you need to be eating foods that are not causing you to be acidic that are and not causing you to be too alkaline either and that are supporting you not supporting keeping the toxins in you we we live in a very toxic environment we have pollution going all over the place it doesn't matter where you live you have Fukushima or Chernobyl or you've got factories spewing out mer mercury and lead and everything else it, it's all around the world in our air and in our water so we're getting it. So what do you need to do? You need to be able to support your body to be able to get those toxins out. Well, if you're eating white sugar and white flour and white salt and white milk and fried oils and hydrated oils and food that already has very little nutritional value in it, in other words, it's dead, okay, or it's been exposed to lysosomates or whatever the word was, you know, the roundups and the pesticides and the herbicides and everything else, those things in, are going to inf affect your digestive system as well. You're not going to be able to digest things as well. And you're going to have leaky gut and stuff, all that sort of stuff. Well, if you, as you start making changes to your diet and what you do, you're going to start seeing changes occur, things that are happening. And then you can, and if you're aware of them, which is why we want you to journal, why we want you to put notes below so you can support each other, so you can be aware of what's going on, that can all change. So instead of having this spiral down where I'm, more pain, more pain, more aches, more chronic this, more chronic that. It's not the drugs that are going to help you from big pharma. I mean, it was, I forget, Hi Hippophrates or some Socrates or somebody that said, you know, food is your medicine, medicine is your food. And unfortunately, we've been giving us really subpar medicines, in other words, really poor foods, you know, poor water, poor, you know, processed foods that hey it's cheap why is it cheap well it's been subsidized well like it's like why is really garbage been subsidized instead of really good organic foods or living foods or salads or all those sort of things oh that's you know, a political that's, issue that's 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 a whole like, different that's a question for another day but you need to be thinking about it right like do I want to do what's really cheap, which is going to make me ill, or do I want to do something that's fair value that makes me healthy? And it's quality, and you need to understand that. I would like to say it this way. This was sort of like a driving lesson. We have taken you through the first few steps, name the parts, show you how the parts move, 
and now we're uh, telling you, okay, you know enough to be able to drive this on the road. Take these seven days, seven lessons that or six that we just gave you, and put them to use. The results will show themselves sometime in three or four or five days of doing it. Like, for instance, uh, my corn reaction is on the third day. So it, I can eat the uh, corn chips today and I feel nothing. And on the third day, I'll have uh, breakouts and I'll feel terrible. On the other hand, dairy I get four to five hours later. If I eat, I don't know, if I put milk, no, let me put it this way. I can eat yogurt all day long, no problem. But I put whipping cream on the cereal and four hours later, my nose is running like it's out of style for a little bit, not too long. So each one of us is different in this way. We have different time schedules for this and different reactions. It can show itself up as uh, skin lesions, breakouts, whatever. I mean, I could demonstrate it. In fact, I think I uh, had something when we were taping the day one. <laughs> anyway, if you look closely, there it is somewhere in there because, of course, the reason I know so much about it is because I'm having to deal with my own problems. I'm one of you. Uh, there are genetics involved. Uh, it's uh, known as the MTHFR mutation of, of the gene. It's involved involves methylation, which is the body's ability to convert um, food into energy and also detoxify. So those of us who have it, either one of your parents or both, one is 50%, Two is 100%. Uh, anyway, the more of it you have, the uh, easier, easier it is for you to fall into chronic fatigue or at least not have enough energy or run out of energy soon. And uh, the other is to, um, to have difficulty detoxifying. So when you do pick up toxicity in the industrial environment, whether it's mercury from dental fillings or, or from the exhalations, the vapors that come from coal burning power plants, or whether it's herbicides, pesticides, stuff from uh, fabrics like fire retardants or stuff from plastics, like from lining of the cans or the water bottles, or I don't know, I could just go on into a long rant. All of the stuff that's coming at you that you should be able to detoxify but you're not able to, we, you need help. We have the tools, we have the means, we can support you further and deeper, but here we just wanted to give you the start, the understanding of the tools and how physically and demonstrably they can, they can be used to show you right in your life. Hope you are continuing to journal because it's a very important tool. Keep notes they will teach you amazing things. Because when you go look back two, three, four, five days earlier, there will be patterns. The migraine, oh, three days earlier, again, I did such and such. And it could be weather, it could be food, it could be an activity, it could be something that you smelled. Uh, some people are really sensitive to perfumes or cigarette smoke or gasoline exhalations whatever they are. There are things that you will soon discover through this process. And you will be able to better control the inputs. Some, some of us call it triggers and thresholds. The thresholds are your resistances, the capacity to with, withstand the, the weather, whatever the weather is. And triggers is the weather whatever triggers you or breaks through the threshold, and it could be any one thing. I use the metaphor of a camel. When you're packing a camel on a trip, on a caravan trip to the oasis, with 200 pounds on its back, it'll run even uphill. With 300 pounds, it will only walk uphill. With 400 pounds, and these are just figures, I don't know for sure, the camel will only walk on flat ground. At 500 pounds, he'll just kneel down and won't get up. And that's where you may be today. So let's see what we need to unload 
off of the cow, off of the back of your immune system so that it can get up and carry its load. But we need to find the way to remove the excess baggage. Right, and that's the whole purpose of this challenge was to start removing a little bit of this excess baggage so that you could see the difference. And hopefully, and we know a lot of you have, and hopefully you have seen a difference. When all of a sudden, wow, I didn't have starches, a couple days later I started to feel a little bit better. I added, added the starches back in because it was only one day, and now I've got some aches and pains and it coming back. And that's, that's really what we wanted to do was add to your awareness of what it is that you, that's going on because it's really is your environment and it's what you put into your mouth. And this challenge was all about what do you put into your mouth. And it can be other things as well, but we need to start somewhere and that's where we started. So that brings us to the end of the seven days. We're considering doing another challenge. It'd be a little bit different, maybe just picking one item and going seven days without that as opposed to just doing this as a, on a daily basis. Uh, let us know what you think down here. Continue to journal and also let us, you know, keep sharing how it's going. This is a seven day challenge. Doesn't mean you have to stop day eight and not to participate. This is a place where you can be supported, where you can share, where you can support other people and together we can all get healthier and stronger and that was the whole point of doing this. So thank you very much for joining us. Martin, do you have any last words before we sign off for today? Uh, thank you for taking the time. Uh, call us if you need. We're at 1-866-543-3388. Go to our website, life-enthusiast, that's E-N-T-H-U-S-I-A-S-T dot com. You'll find us there. There's lots of reading there, lots of possibilities. But first of all, use this tool as your guidance, as your entryway into discovering what's going on and why it's going on. Thank Excellent. you so very much. Our mission is restoring vitality to you and to the planet, and we certainly hope that uh, we started and we succeeded in that mission with you uh, during this challenge. So thank you very much for joining us, everybody. 